Hey, I'm Bob with Bob CNC, and we're doing a series on G Code 101. I'm here with my best friend Keith, and uh, if you've seen a couple videos before, we have one on coordinate systems and some uh, stuff on header files, and we're going to continue a little bit more on header files. Uh, these are codes that we don't necessarily need for our CNC machines, but if you are editing a file, you might find them, right? So it's important to understand what they are and what they do. Also, by the way, you don't really need us for this. You can actually search the internet and find these codes and uh, read pretty good description. But this will make it easy and hopefully we'll have some fun. So, are you ready? Oh, God. I was born ready, Bob. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, we're going to just do uh, about four of them today. So, it should be a pretty quick video. So, the first one is it's T0M6. I get a lot of emails in the help desk saying, hey, I got a code that Gerbil doesn't recognize. And it's this one. So what is it? It's actually pretty simple. It's a tool change, and Gerbil doesn't handle tool changes. You can actually just delete this line, but, but what is it for? Well, before you get there, how would they get this command? If right. they didn't put it in, where did it come from? So if you like uh, write a uh, uh, G code, like with VCarve or Estelcam or those, and, and you save your tool path, not using the right post processor, like which is gerbil inch or gerbil millimeter for our, our machines, okay. then it will automatically put in, because it's good G, G code you know, uh, fundamentals, right? So it would automatically put in the tool change because obviously if you have an industrial machine, you got to pick up a, a bit that you're going to cut with before you start cutting. Okay. So after you do the normal header file stuff, the G90, the 17, the units like the G20 or 21, you're going to see some of these types of commands. Okay. So T0 is Tool number zero. It could be tool number one, tool number two. As a matter of fact, if you had a machine, tool 33, 34, whatever. It's just the number of tool that's defined in a file somewhere outside that the, the uh, G code interpreter or the one that's created G code can go and say, oh, this is an eighth inch bit and it's so right. long and this many flutes, right? And the M6 is basically the tool change command. So if you see this command, what should happen on your machine is it's going to stop and go do a, a tool chain subroutine. We don't have that on our machines. Again, you would never write this on yours, your machine. You would basically use this uh, or, or, or need to understand this so you could delete it. If it so if I see it, erase it. You can erase it okay. if you're using our CNC machines. If you're oh, I can't do that at somebody else's shop. Nobody else's shop. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Okay. You could get some, uh, some trouble. Okay. Or if. Uh, uh, you wanted to, you could uh, maybe turn on and off the spindle and, and then you maybe want to keep this one. Okay. Right. I think you were going to write a blog about that eventually, right? You're going to make me do that. So yes. yes. <laughs> He's going to write a blog about that. Okay, so that's pretty easy, right? It's whatever tool you're using. Uh, M6, it's a tool change command. Don't need it if you're writing code. So again, we talked about this last time. If you're wanting to look at a G code file, you can open it up in your favorite text editor. And you can just delete this line, and if you use the, the correct post processor, right, it won't actually uh, put this line in there, so you won't have to deal with it, right? Okay, so the next one is, is a M3 or M4, and uh, what does that do? Pretty simple. Turns on the spindle, or turns off the spindle, or I'm sorry, turns on the spindle, but it's either clockwise or counterclockwise. All right. We want to go clockwise, that's the way router bits are, are built, right? Can you think of a reason why we would want to go counterclockwise? Well, if I'm working with wood, I can't, I can't think of one. Uh, I suppose if I'm in a machine shop or something, what, tapping spools? Yeah, and... absolutely. You put in a tap, you're threading a hole, you need to pull the tap out. So you got to turn the spindle off, get it to go counterclockwise as you're moving the Z up so that you can, you can pull that out. Okay. Okay, there, there's also uh, other reasons for different types of manufacturing, but we won't cover them today. Okay, so the next one that you may see, and again, if you see those, uh, you, you can erase those because we don't need them. However, if you decide to put an on off on your spindle that, you know, gerbil can control, then you'll need to be familiar with the uh, turn on the spindle or, or doing a tool change. Okay, so the next one that you may see is a, uh, an S, and that just defines the spindle RPM. Again, for our machines, it's a fixed speed router. And even if it wasn't a fixed speed, if we went to like a DeWalt 611 as variable speed, this doesn't do us any good unless 
we're controlling it with the controller. And right now, we can put, keep that completely separated. Okay. So if you have a, uh, like in VCARB, it'll ask you for the spindle speed. You could put in one or four billion. It doesn't matter. It'll just put in S and whatever that number is, but it's not actually controlled by the controller. Oh. Okay. So yeah. So so if you write a G code file, you don't really need to write that. However, if you were wanting to write G code file that would be portable, you would need to understand speeds and feeds so that you may include that even though your machine doesn't use it. Now what do you mean by speeds and feeds? Well, you have to cut at a certain feed rate, you know, how fast you're moving the bits in the material, and your RPM is uh, definitely related to that. And those two together are called speeds and feeds. And you would calculate your spindle speed if it was faster than you need to cut faster. It also depends on the type of bit. So if you have one flute, you would cut slower than if you had three flutes. So the idea is, is it all comes down to the chip load. Every time that router bit comes around, right? So if we have a router bit and this is the tooth, every time it comes around and peels off a piece of wood, you want that piece of wood to be a certain size. Piece of metal, be a certain size. That is the chip that you're pulling off and pulling off that, how much load it takes is really important. And we can get into that in another video if you would like. Okay. Okay, so that really is spindle speed. And then of course you'll want to turn your spindle off later once you're done. But now with, with the machine looking like an E3 or an E4, I don't have to worry about that. No, you don't. Because everything's done manual. Absolutely. All right. That's so in a file that you might open and edit, you may see up at the top. A tool like a T1M6, it's setting the speed, it's turning the spindle on, in this case clockwise, and then at the end of the G-code you may see an M5 where it's turning the G-code off, and then an M30 or an M2 where it says I'm done with the program. So uh, just to be familiar with it so that you can edit your own G-code file, or if you're having problems with why won't it read this, if it's one of these commands, you can just delete it because you know that it's a spindle command and it's not needed. All right. That makes sense? Robert, thank you. All right, well, until our next video. Thanks, guys. Thank you.